Hi guys, my name is Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my 36 week pregnancy update. I'm so excited that I've been able to make it to 36 weeks because now he's considered full term and if I go into labor, I can not be quite as worried about it. And that's especially exciting to me because of some of these false labors that I've been having before I turned 36 weeks and that was a little bit scary but we'll get into that a little more later. So Demetrius is about the size of a head of romaine lettuce and I still weigh about 188 pounds so from the beginning of my pregnancy I gained a total of 48 pounds but I haven't really gained any since the last couple of dates, I guess. But it's pretty normal to slow down in weight gain but also I was talking to my midwife and I think that it's more because of changing up my diet a little bit. My husband is doing the GAPS diet, if you guys didn't know that, and it's a lot lower in carbs because there's no grains or sugars, and I wasn't trying to follow it, but just because I make him his food, and normally we just eat all the same dinner, I was, for that one meal, not eating like any carbs, just like a meat and vegetable. And so I had stopped gaining weight and I actually lost a little bit of weight, and so I was talking to my midwife about it and she said that's why. So she said, to make sure that you make yourself something like rice or pasta or quinoa or some carb thing with every meal <laughs> because I am growing a person and I need a little extra food. <laughs> so I had lost a little bit, now I'm back up to what I was at least, so that is good and hopefully I gain a bit more before the end of my pregnancy. But and I'm actually getting a crazy food craving lately. Like I haven't had food cravings since my first trimester and it's really funny because I had this exact same food craving with Sophia's pregnancy in my last month. I started craving cheese with some sort of fruit. Normally apples, but it could be canned fruit, but a bite of cheese with a bite of fruit, like together. And normally I hate cheese unless it's like mixed with something and diluted, like especially this kind of sharp cheddar cheese I've been craving. But I didn't even remember that I craved that with my daughter's pregnancy until I started craving it with this one and it brought back a lot of memories of eating cheese and fruit <laughs> together. So that's interesting. I'm actually just really content to still be pregnant and I'm just feeling very peaceful and calm about pregnancy and just very connected to this baby and it's probably a little bit weird that I'm, I mean, I'm in so much pain all the time and there's a lot of things about pregnancy that aren't very fun. But in so many ways, I am just so much enjoying being pregnant still. <laughs> and I don't feel rushed to get to the end. I just am just really content with where I'm at right now. And I fully trust that he will come exactly when he's ready. And I don't need to worry about when that is. Near the end of pregnancy, I get very like reflective and I have a lot of like just deep thoughts about just my body and pregnancy and postpartum and the actual labor. And so I've just been doing a lot of thinking, but I'm just really glad that I'm not feeling impatient because that would be really annoying if I was impatient already and I could have like four to six more weeks left. So I had another ultrasound back on January 21st, I think, and it was just to check my low-lying placenta because when we found out the gender, they just noticed that my placenta was kind of close to my cervix. And so my midwife said it was probably nothing to worry about at all, but if I was comfortable getting another ultrasound, she would prefer it just so that we know that like, for sure there's nothing to worry about. I think just for the main reason that if I were to hemorrhage during labor, she would be able to rule one big possibility out right away. But really good news, my placenta is way up at the top of my uterus. It's nowhere near my cervix. She was actually looking down near the bottom, looking for my placenta, kind of where it was before and she was having a hard time finding it and she was like well i'll just come up and like look at his feet and like make sure he's still a boy and do like stuff at the top of my uterus and she went up there and she's like oh there's a placenta it's like way up at the top so that was such a relief to hear and he is still a boy which is a good thing and it also she said it looks like he has a little bit of hair which is super exciting she was looking at his profile and she could see along the back of his head that there was like fuzzy stuff and so she thought that looked like it might be a little bit of hair. So hopefully he has a bit more than Sophia did when she came out. She was like bald and she still is. Now she's getting a little bit of hair, but she doesn't have much. And just the same as the last ultrasound, he had his little hands up by his face the entire time and it was really hard to get 
any like face pictures of him and she couldn't even get his head measurements because he was just he's very shy apparently so <laughs> I thought that was pretty cute I've definitely been more in tune with his position lately he's finally to the size where I can tell what position he's in all the time which is really exciting because even when Sophia was at the end of her pregnancy I still couldn't tell I just wasn't experienced enough but now with this second pregnancy I can tell when he's head down which is really nice and just good for my peace of mind to be able to like tell myself if he's like in the proper position. He is head down and so hopefully that means he'll just stay like that until the end and I won't have to worry about any breech babies. One other thing that happened a few weeks ago was that I threw out my pubic bone and now my pelvis is just kind of messed up and it keeps falling back out even though I go to the chiropractor so much now. But I was late for an appointment and my car was parked two blocks away and I made the stupid decision to, instead of just being a little bit late to my appointment, I ran with Sophia on my hip and the diaper bag on my shoulder and that was just a terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> because starting that night my pubic bone was like really not happy <laughs> about that and so it just keeps falling back out just because everything's so loose and once it got thrown out of position it just is it's gonna keep falling out because there's nothing to hold it in like all my ligaments are just so loose so I'll just have to keep going back to the chiropractor and getting it fixed the chiropractor did say to do some stretches for the front of my thighs because my muscles there are really tight and she said that because they're so tight it's like my body's like trying to like curl over like into itself and that's kind of pulling my pubic bone out and so if I can get those muscles loosened up a little bit that'll help quite a bit with having it like stay in position a little bit more which would be nice. She also said if I can avoid sitting as much as possible and either be standing or laying down which she said I know is really hard because you're just tired and especially with it has been really difficult with Sophia and I tend to sit a lot when especially when Sophia is just fussy and she needs me to rock her in her chair so I haven't been the best about that, but it, I feel like it's just kind of impractical for me to expect to not ever sit, so. My midwife said to stop doing squats, and if you have watched my previous pregnancy updates, I've talked about like the exercises I'm doing in pregnancy, and one of them is squats. I was doing about like 100 squats a day when, when I remembered. Mostly in the evenings when we were watching a show, I would just stand up and do my squats. But once I threw out my pubic bone, and then also she just doesn't really recommend doing exercises like that this far into pregnancy so she just wants me to rest and I'm perfectly happy to do that because I don't much enjoy exercise anyway. I've been having lots of contractions and false labors. The day before I turned 35 weeks, that night I had what I thought, like, I was really worried it was actual labor because they were quite painful contractions and they lasted for a few hours. And with Sophia, I had so many false labors, but they weren't painful until I actually went into labor. So this was like actually painful. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go into labor before I even turn 35 weeks and it's gonna be terrible. But it was just a false labor and it stopped. I just laid in bed and tried to just relax everything and tried to make it slow down. And I eventually just fell asleep and I woke up and they were gone, so. That was really good, but it stopped. And then since then, I've had a couple more like nighttime kind of painful false labors. And then during the day, I do have a lot of Braxton Hayes contractions. And they're more like my whole belly tightens, which is how my Braxton Hayes works Sophia. But also along the bottom of my belly, all the way stretching from either hip, is like really painful, like more um, period cramps and then also in my low back. So they're a bit different of Braxton Hicks and they can be pretty uncomfortable, but I'm starting to get a bit more used to them and not be worried every time I have a few painful ones in a row. I've been feeling a super strong urge to nest and get everything ready for the baby, even though it could be a while. He could come anytime, so I'm just like, I just feel this urge to like, I have to get everything ready right now. So I've been I washed all of his clothes, I washed all of his cloth diapers, are, all of his clothes are organized in his dresser upstairs in Sophia's room, all of his cloth diapers are with Sophia's cloth diapers down in our room, and I have two outfits in 
my birth kit. I have my whole birth kit ready. I've got all of his blankets and swaddles cleaned and set up in a bin next to my bed so that I can get to him easily. And I have his bassinet set up next to our bed, even though he probably won't use it a ton in the first few days, but it'll be nice to set him in a nap for naps. And we used it a lot with Sophia. I'm just like, ready to go. If I went into labor right now, I would be totally prepared. So I like knowing that I'm well prepared and I have my list on the refrigerator of things that we need to do once I go into labor, like change the sheets and all of that. And I actually filmed a video on what I've prepared for having a home birth, like all the supplies and everything. And that'll be going out in a couple weeks, I think. So I'll link that for you guys below so that when it goes live, you can check it out because I have got all that stuff ready, like a bit earlier than I have to. I had it ready when I was like 34 weeks and technically I'm not even supposed to I'm not, I don't even need to order it until I'm 36 weeks, but I'm just obsessed with being prepared ahead of time. Maybe that's a sign that I'm having it early, who knows? But either way, I'm ready to go, but I'm also just content to keep being pregnant. So let's show you guys the bump. enjoyed this pregnancy update. It was kind of a long one. I had a lot of new things to talk about, a lot of really exciting things. He could really just be here anytime, but hopefully I'll be able to film my 38 to be pregnancy update in another couple weeks for you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!